Congressman John Conyers, it's really good to have what you. What a pleasure to see you again. Yes. So you were one of the major warriors for the Humphrey Hawkins full employment bill back in the 19... Uh, 1978. Yes. And right about that time, the thing that always amazes me about that period was we, we were speaking of unemployment at that time that was around 7% and African American communities was around 14 to 15%. But the unemployment situation was actually not as bad as it is now. That's right. How is it that then you were able to get Congress, you and your colleagues uh, in the Black Caucus, were able to get a full employment bill through the Congress then but we're not having that kind of conversation, that kind of push about jobs now. What's the difference? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, one, there is so much uh, wealth and opportunity if you've got a job and are working that it masks the fact that the, that the unemployment, as you said, is worse. Uh, you said 15, 14, 15 percent uh, in the African American community. In Detroit, it's 31 percent unemployed mm -hmm. because they laid off a third of all the workers at Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors, and they can't find jobs. There are no jobs for them. Yeah. So that's what the difference is. It, uh, if you go downtown in any city, things look great. They're not great at all, yeah. because they're ghettos, communities where people are laid off, they're people losing their house in record numbers, and there are no jobs. Kids coming out of college, there are no jobs. So what we've got to do in Congress is stop talking about jobs and enact some legislation, and that's why I dusted off the Humphrey Hawkins bill of 1978 and reintroduced it because it gives the federal government the right to hire in high unemployment areas right on the spot to rebuild these crumbling schools, uh, beat up highways, uh, waterways, and, and other kinds of public work, and pays good money to retrain them as well. The argument that we hear all the time that we can't afford to do that right now uh, is the thing that has kept that kind of discussion off the table. What do you say to people who say we can't afford to do this? Well, we thing? can't afford not to do it because as, as you, you never get out of unemployment by reducing the deficit. The deficit are just uh, a string of zeros which nobody knows what they are, they're so high, but they were brought on by the same people in Congress that don't want to put people to work. So, and they're the ones that caused the deficit. The, uh, Obama didn't create the deficit, mm -hmm. he inherited the deficit. And the, the people that are resisting a full employment bill are the same people that supported the people that created the deficit. As a matter of fact, they voted for it, the ones that were here then. All right. So let's talk about this jobs tour. Okay. And why is this jobs tour important? Well, the main thing behind the jobs tour is to let people that are in hard times, that are without a job, that are catching hell, to know that we're really concerned with them and that, that we're not coming out to make a speech or to sell them on some notion. We want them to tell us about their pain. You know, it's therapeutic to just have people listen to you when you got a problem. Yeah. Then the, the number two, though, is to do something about it after you've listened. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm working on. Is a full jobs bill. There's no reason why the wealthiest country in civilization can't put everybody to work at good wages. Now we spent trillions bailing out the bankers, Wall Street, 
wealthy getting tax cuts, and now we're it's time to bail out the working people that are on hard times. Well, I suspect part of the problem is that the bankers have pretty loud voices here on the Hill. Uh, the corporations and the Chamber of Commerce members, uh, or certainly the Chamber of Commerce headquarters, has a very loud voice. And it seems that the unemployed so far, the voice hasn't registered very loudly here. That's why we're marching when at the CBC on September the 21st, we're marching to the White House because the poor don't have any lobbyists. There's not one lobbyist for the poor on K Street. Not one. They all represent some corporation that can afford to pay them to lobby for what they want, namely tax cuts, namely against spreading this uh, opportunity and jobs and wealth across the country. And so we've got, we've, we've got to lobby with our feet. And that's what we're doing. Right. And uh, the jobs tour also would, would uh, are, are you that, are you hopeful that this tour will actually work to elevate the voice, to amplify the voice of, of uh, unemployed people? I know it will, because that come out of the civil rights movement like you do, and, and that's how it started. Yeah. With, unless people protest and let their voices be heard, even if you don't have a lobbyist, you won't get listened to. Thank you very much. Pleasure.